Hello everybody, I am here to show you how to make the digital tessellations in paint. So, to begin with, we are going to simply put the word paint into our Google search. And it should be the first one that pops up. It's Microsoft Paint. And it says Untitled-Paint. That's the one that I want to click on. When I click on it, it automatically brings me to paint. This is what yours might look like. Your workspace might be a lot smaller, something like this. So I'm just going to pull that corner out and make my workspace bigger. So this is very similar to Microsoft Paint. If you ever use it before, it's very simple. And it's going to let us make digital tessellations. So first we need to make a square box. I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. I'm going to choose the last option. That's going to make a solid color square for me. And I can choose any of the colors. There's our color options on the bottom. I'm going to choose blue for mine. And I can click and hold to make any type of rectangular shape. So it doesn't make a perfect square for us, so we're just going to have to eyeball it and make as close to a even square as we can. So that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to use a cut tool. So we have two types of cut tools. The first one is the dotted rectangle, and the other one is the dotted star. The dotted rectangle just makes us, just lets us make rectangular cut shapes. But we want to use the dotted star one. Now, when we click on either one of those tools, it brings up two options here on the bottom. You see three um, 3D shapes, a cylinder, a sphere, and a cube. The first option I know is selected because it's dark blue. So if I select the bottom one, it turns dark blue. The top one has a white background behind the cube. And the bottom one has a clear background behind the cube. So if I have it on the first option, and let's say I cut out some type of shape, it's going to have a white background behind it. And you'll see that here in a minute. So can you see that connected white background? Well, we don't want that because if we try and move our piece to the opposite side to make our tessellation, that white background is in the way. So let me undo this. And I want to choose the clear background. So make sure that you are choosing the dotted star and the clear background. Now I can make my cut tessellation. I'm going to do a translation tessellation, so cutting from one side and moving it to the opposite. I'm going to click down and hold. I'm just going to make this a random one, so jagged curved line. And I want to bring that line back to the beginning where it started. Now I can move my cutout piece from the back to the front, and you can see it doesn't have any white background. I want to leave just a little bit of space, and I'll show you why here in a minute. Now I'm going to cut another piece from the top. Connect that and move that from the top to the bottom. So that is translation. Now the reason why I left a little bit of space in between and I didn't connect it all the way is because if I decide to use um, this tessellation pattern when I'm cutting out of paper, then I can see a little bit more clearly the shape that I cut out and attached. If I connect it all the way, then it's going to be a little bit harder for me to see 
what the exact shape I did. Also, if you accidentally, let's say I placed it right here, and it's actually supposed to match up to the corner, but if I left a little bit of space, I can go to my dotted rectangle and make a square around it and reposition it or remove it. If I attached it all the way, it would be a lot harder to recut it. So once you place an object down, let's say I put it right there, and I click outside of that dotted box, that piece is stuck where it's at. I can't re-grab it. The only way you can move it again is by cutting the piece and then moving it. So that is how you cut and move pieces from one side to the other for a translation tessellation. So when you are all finished making however many tessellations you need to do, the last thing you need to do is save your work. So you're going to do that by simply clicking on File and Save As. Once you click on that, it'll save the picture of your white workspace as a photo. And it'll probably save it to your download file in your Chromebook or on your computer. So you will need to open up your um, file folder and probably look in your download folder and that's the photo that you will submit to your assignment in Google Classroom. And that's it.